Imagine a world where the unthinkable is happening right before our eyes. A nation brimming with a colossal Soviet-era arsenal powerful enough to have crushed its adversary long ago. Yet, defying all expectations, the conflict drags on, and the balance of power hangs precariously by a thread. This is the stark picture Peter Zihan paints, a sobering reminder that we can't afford to turn a blind eye to this unfolding reality. Uh, the Ukrainian right. industrial plant is limited. What they've done with drones is revolutionary and impressive, and it's insufficient to the challenge before them. Uh, the Russian, excuse me, the Soviet arsenal that resides in Russia all by itself is probably enough to win this war if nobody else gets involved. In fact, I would say it's a little surprising that it hasn't won the war already. It's so huge, and that's before before you bring in millions of shells from North Korea, before you bring in thousands of drones from Iran, before you bring in all the technical assistance from China. Uh, the Europeans believed seriously that history was over and that military conflicts were a thing of the past, especially in places like Germany. And while as an American, the idea that the Germans had become passivist actually makes me feel kind of secure <laughs> because I remember how it was when they felt otherwise. Uh, they're rearming from a very, very low level. And that means that the United States and to a lesser degree, uh, the United Kingdom <clears throat> and France are really the only ones that matter for the moment until everybody else can retool. Sign underscores the immense potential of Russia's military, pointing to its extensive Soviet era stockpiles that in theory should have already clinched a victory in Ukraine. However, as the conflict lingers, the nature of warfare is swiftly evolving. Initially, both sides leaned heavily on their existing reserves, hurling outdated weapons into the fray in a frantic effort to seize the upper hand. But as these stockpiles dwindle, a new reality of modern warfare is emerging, one that promises a far more complex and intense struggle ahead. Let's delve deeper into this shifting strategy. Uh, luckily, as part of the war on terror, the United States turned over a new leaf technologically throughout its entire military structure, especially in the army. So we also have these significant reserves of weapons like the ATCOMs that are a generation or two ahead of what the Soviet systems were and that we're not using anymore. So basically what we've been doing in the first two years to date has been throwing each other's spares at one another in Ukraine with some dusting of some more recent things. Uh, that is not going to be how this war is going to look a year from now because we're starting to get to the bottom of those reserves. Now it's going to be about production. That's a different fight. The conflict is transitioning into a new phase where the emphasis shifts from exhausting outdated reserves to ramping up the production of advanced weaponry. As we navigate the evolving geopolitical landscape, a critical issue arises from the core of Russia's military challenges. While analysts like Peter Zain offer valuable insights into global dynamics, the reality on the ground reveals severe vulnerabilities within Russia's military, particularly its armored forces, which were once considered the backbone of its strength. The centerpiece of these forces, the T-90 tank, once hailed by Vladimir Putin as the best in the world, is proving far less formidable than advertised. Let's explore why Russia is depleting its best tanks and what this means for the future of the conflict. The T-90 tank, once a symbol of Russian military prowess, is quickly becoming more of a liability than an asset. Despite President Putin's claims, the battlefield performance of the T-90 tells a different story. Over the past two and a half years, Russia has been forced to deploy these tanks sparingly, and when they do see action, the results have often been disastrous. To date, Russia has lost over 100 T-90s, a staggering number that raises critical questions. Why is Russia losing so many of its supposedly top-tier tanks? Why has their deployment been so limited? And most importantly, why has the T-90 failed to deliver the battlefield dominance it was designed for? To understand these failures, we need to examine what makes the T-90 special on paper. Entering service in 1992 and built by Ural the Gonzavod, the T-90 is a heavily armored behemoth equipped with advanced weaponry, including a 125mm smoothbore gun capable of firing a variety of rounds, and a 9M119 reflex anti-tank guided missile system. These features should, in theory, make the T-90 an unmatched threat on the battlefield. Yet, despite its impressive specifications, the T-90 has struggled to withstand the challenges of modern warfare. 
One of the key issues is that, while advanced, the T-90 was not designed to counter the new generation of top attack weapons that Ukraine has effectively deployed. These weapons, such as the next-generation light anti-tank weapon, strike from above, targeting the tank's most vulnerable point, its top armor. The T-90's defenses, optimized for traditional threats, are largely ineffective against these modern attacks. Ukrainian forces have exploited this vulnerability, leading to significant losses of T-90s in the field. Additionally, despite recent upgrades, including the T-90M variant with enhanced firepower and protection, the tanks have underperformed in Ukraine. The T-90M, featuring a more powerful engine and an all-weather targeting system, was expected to be a game-changer. However, even this upgraded version has struggled against Ukraine's anti-tank capabilities. The loss of these tanks, particularly the T-90M, not only weakens Russia's armored forces but also deals a substantial psychological blow. Putin's public praise for the T-90M as the world's best tank now rings hollow as these tanks are increasingly destroyed or captured. Beyond the T-90s, Russia has lost a staggering 3,235 tanks in total, with over 2,199 confirmed destroyed. These figures underscore a broader issue plaguing Russia's military, a severe depletion of its armored forces. The situation has become so dire that Russia is now forced to rely on older, less capable tanks, further diminishing its battlefield position. The T-90, once the pride of Russia's armored forces, has become emblematic of its military shortcomings. The combination of outdated defenses, the rise of new anti-tank technologies, and the heavy losses sustained in Ukraine have left Russia with a rapidly dwindling supply of its best tanks. This depletion not only undermines Russia's military capabilities, but also casts serious doubts on its ability to sustain a prolonged conflict. As Russia's stockpile of top tanks runs low, it faces a stark reality. Its once-vaunted armored forces are now in retreat, both literally and figuratively. 